does it really matter where a tool is made? Is a tool made in China just as good as one made in Japan? Today we'll be testing a Makita Impact driver that's made in Japan and also one that's made in China. The Makita Impact driver that's made in Japan did cost me about an extra $60. So the question is, is it better and is it worth the extra $60? Let's get the testing underway and let's find out. In the first test, we'll see which impact driver produces the most torque. Then we'll find out which tool loosens bolts the fastest. We'll see which one can drive in lag bolts the farthest. And then we'll compare the internals of the tool to see why one performs a lot better than the other. At a price of $167 for just the tool and not the battery or charger is this Makita 18 volt LXT lithium ion brushless four speed impact driver. 3,600 max RPM and 1,600 inch pounds of max torque. Four speed power selection, three year warranty. At $167, it's about $60 less expensive than the one that's made in Japan. For $225, I bought the red Makita from a person who lives in Japan and he sent it to me directly from Japan. So since I bought this from an individual, it doesn't come with a warranty. The owner's manual is also written in Japanese. Made in Japan. Model TD172, which is a different model number than the blue Makita. 0 to 1100 RPM in mode 1, to 2100 in mode 2, 3200 mode 3, and 3600 mode 4. 1100 impacts per minute in mode 1, 2600 2, 3600 3, and 3800 4. The Makita XDT16 has the exact same specs is the Makita that's made in Japan. The blue Makita weighs 881 grams. At 855 grams, the red Makita is 26 grams lighter. Even though both tools have the same specs, they have a little bit different outward appearance. The cases on both tools look very similar, but there are some subtle differences between the two. The blue Makita does have a couple more options on the mode selector switch compared to the red Makita. However, both Makitas have four forward and four reverse modes. The bit sleeve on the red Makita is just over two millimeters larger diameter, making it a little bit easier to release the bit or the bit holder. The anvil is also slightly shorter on the red Makita, which shortens the tool by almost two millimeters. The brightness of the LED lights on the front seem to be about the same. Both the tools should be pretty close to the same noise level. I placed the sound meter 24 inches from the tool. And the red Makita is very close to 79 decibels. And the blue Makita is just a little bit louder at 80 decibels. Later in the video, we'll do a tool tear down, but it sure sounds like the bearings are making a little bit more noise in the blue Makita. If you're working with delicate material, good low RPM control is pretty helpful. The slowest the blue Makita would rotate without stalling is 114 RPM. I'm gonna go ahead and use the same battery for the red Makita just so we can get a fair comparison. The red Makita offers slightly better low RPM control at right around 100. In forward direction, level 4, the blue Makita made 3,418 RPM, which is 182 RPM slower than its 3,600 no-load RPM rating. However, it actually did better than the red Makita, which would only spin up to 3,330 RPM. So the blue Makita is 92 RPM faster than the red Makita. Let's test reverse mode in level 4. The blue Makita topped out at 3,472 RPM. Once again, the Makita was slower, in fact 81 RPM slower at 3,391. We have six Makita batteries to work with, so I'll swap out the batteries between each of the tests. Let's test the maximum torque output for each of the Makitas using this test setup. It's a really simple setup with two hydraulic rams wedged between two very thick pieces of steel. Running through the entire setup is a very large bolt. The tighter the bolt becomes, the higher the PSI. We'll see if either one of these can reach 2000 PSI. Just to make sure we get consistent test results between different tests, I'll be using a high quality synthetic grease. The battery is fully charged. Testing for maximum torque in forward direction, mode four. The test will last right at 15 seconds. Unfortunately, I already broke a socket adapter. Let's try this again. The blue Makita is building torque very quickly. One thousand nine hundred and fifty PSI is pretty impressive. It's going to be pretty hard to beat. The battery in the red Makita is fully charged. The red Makita totally pegged the gauge and actually went past two thousand PSI to about two thousand two hundred. I just finished swapping out the bolt. This one's left hand threaded. So let's test the loosening torque of each impact driver. One thousand nine hundred PSI. Ha <laughs> ha! 
wow, the cage is totally pegged. Looks like about 24, 2500 PSI. Not only does the red Makita hit harder, there's also a lot less vibration in the handle. From the time you hit the trigger until the time the tool responds is called trigger lag. So let's see which tool has the better electronics and goes to work faster. I'll try to squeeze the triggers at exactly the same time. The red Makita is definitely faster on the first test. I'll go ahead and switch hands and we'll try this one more time. Okay, once again, it's the red Makita that's faster. So the blue Makita makes higher no load speed, but the red Makita hits harder and makes more torque. I'll tighten up the lug nuts to 130 foot pounds and we'll see if the red or the blue Makita can remove the lug nuts the fastest. And the red Makita is slightly faster on the first lug nut. And it's very close, but the red Makita is slightly faster once again. I use an impact driver all the time for driving in screws. So let's see which one is the fastest at driving in some three and a half inch screws. And the red Makita barely edges out the blue Makita on the first screw. And it's the red Makita for the win on the second screw. Okay, my left hand got tired of losing and cheated on the third test, allowing the blue Makita to get the win. Let's try this again. And it's definitely the closest race of the three with the red Makita barely edging out the blue. Driving in a five inch light bolt shouldn't be too much of a challenge for either one of these impact drivers. So let's see which one is the fastest. Both impact drivers made quick work, but the red is a little bit faster. Let's try this again. And the blue Makita barely edges out the red Makita this time. And Red Makita wins in the third lag bolt, coming out on top two out of three times. I don't think either of the impact drivers can drive in an eight inch lag bolt, but let's see which one can make the most progress and then we'll measure how much torque it takes to move the lag bolt. And the blue Makita looks like it started off a little bit faster, but the red Makita quickly caught up. And both impact drivers are running out of steam, but the red Makita seems to have made a little bit more progress. Makita red about three and a half inches. Makita blue had about three and seven eighths inches to go. I'm gonna use a torque adapter to see how much torque it takes to get these lag bolts to begin moving. 385 inch pounds. The lag bolt for the blue Makita began moving at 336 inch pounds, which is 49 inch pounds less than the red Makita. In the next test, let's see how many times each impact driver can rotate this engine. With the engine brake applied, it takes right at 60 inch pounds of torque to rotate the engine. This will provide a pretty good simulation on how quickly each impact driver can remove a faster with rusty or galled threads. The test will last right at 30 seconds. And the blue Makita did a great job of getting the motor moving and seems to be doing a great job maintaining momentum. Three and a half rotations for the blue Makita. Let's see if the red Makita can do even better. And the red Makita is definitely making better progress than the blue Makita, but will it overheat? And it's a win for the red Makita with four and a half rotations compared to only three and a half for the blue Makita. Let's test the durability of each impact driver by dropping them from 12 feet onto a concrete slab. I'll place a PVC pipe on the tool to help control the impact angle of the tool. And the blue Makita experienced a really direct impact to the anvil. With a 5 amp hour battery attached, this type of impact puts a lot of stress on the handle. And the blue Makita's handle experienced quite a bit of flexion, but it didn't break. Okay, the Makita held up just fine, but unfortunately the socket adapter is bent. The red Makita impacted the concrete at a slightly different angle, and the handle seems to have done slightly better, but it could have just been the impact angle. Other than the badly bent socket adapter, no damage to the red Makita. Okay, the Makita held up just fine, but the socket adapter is bent pretty badly. The red Makita definitely performs better, but are the tool internals basically the same or are they quite a bit different? The blue Makita bearing on the back of the motor makes quite a bit more noise than the red Makita. From a distance, the internals look a lot alike, but there's actually quite a bit of difference. The connector and switch are definitely not interchangeable. The red Makita is on the left and the blue is on the right. The controller boards actually look quite a bit different from each other. Even the rotor pinions were built using a different process. The hammer cases are also quite a bit different. A flathead screwdriver is all you need to pry open the hammer case on the red Makita. The blue Makita is left hand threaded. The hammer for the red Makita is on the right and the blue one is on the left and as you can see there's a huge difference between the size of the hammers. The hammer assembly for the blue Makita weighs 225 grams. 
The hammer assembly for the red weighs 229 grams, so four grams heavier. In a recent video, I drove in a thousand drywall screws using an impact driver, and it caused my hand to go numb from all the vibration put off by the tool. I don't have a way to quantify vibration between the red as well as the blue Makita, but the red Makita definitely vibrates a lot less than the blue. So is the red Makita worth the extra $60? I guess that's a matter of opinion. In my opinion, it's definitely worth the extra money if you plan to use the tool a lot and keep it for a long time. All the videos in this channel, including this one, are viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea, I hope you take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and look forward to next time.